Hi everyone. So this week the UK and parts of Northern Europe had a solar eclipse. The Large Hadron Collider is set to be turned back on after a couple of years of refurbishment. And the comet that Rosetta is looking at, 67P, seems to be slowing down the way it's rotating. This is your weekly science news with me, the UK astronaut. So this week was a partial solar eclipse for a lot of people in the UK and also areas of Northern Europe. So a partial solar eclipse is where the moon covers part of the light from the sun, whereas a total eclipse is where the moon covers all the light from the sun. And in the UK, we got between around 85 and 95% of a total eclipse. So this is when the moon covers between 85 and 95% of the light from the sun. It's really spectacular. I went down into the center of town and there were thousands of us all together we all had our eclipse glasses on, we had a solar telescope, loads of people with cameras with solar filters on top and the, we got some really incredible photos of the solar eclipse throughout the entire time that it's happening. Uh, you can also see like a sunspot on the sun at the same time and it was really 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 good. Um, so really lots of great photos and a really really good entertaining time. And this is something known as the sort of colander eclipse and this is sort of an unofficial name given to it. This is because a really good technique that people started using for this eclipse was to hold up a colander towards the sun and what they did was the, the image from the sun sort of went through each of the little holes in the colander and projected the image of the moon passing in front of the sun down on the ground in front of you. So what you could see was lots of little mini pictures of the eclipse and there's a really really good photos and of people using the colander to great effect. It's really really good. The next partial solar eclipse isn't going to happen until around 2021 so if you miss this one you haven't got to wait too long. Uh, only around six years time, but hopefully you'll go out and manage to see it it's really, really good to be able to see. So the Large Hadron Collider is set to be switched back on this week. And this is the facility underneath Switzerland that's trying to smash really high energy particles together. And what it does by doing this is these particles shatter apart into lots of even more smaller, more exotic particles. And we have massive detectors to be able to see what these types of particles are. A lot of them we've never seen before, so it's really, really interesting to see. And the Large Hadron Collider has had a couple of years now where it's just been sort of turned off and they've been upgrading it. So they've been upgrading the detectors, they've been making it a lot more stable and lots of other small upgrades. Uh, and hopefully this is going to increase its energy to double the amount of energy it had before. This means we'll see even more particles and different types of particles, more energetic particles. Uh, and so it should be hopefully turned on this week. They reckon by Wednesday uh, they'll start sort of having it all switched on and start doing some things with it. Um, however, it's going to take at least a couple of months before they start getting up to the stage where they can take more science from it and get more results and things like this. So something to keep an eye on, but it's really good news that they've finally managed to switch it back on and it's going to be new and improved and get even more and better results. So the Comet 67P, which is the comet that Rosetta, the ESA spacecraft, is orbiting around, has been slowing down recently. So what happens is the comet rotates as it travels around the solar system. The scientists at ESA have realised that it's slowing down by around one second each day. This doesn't sound like a heck of a lot, but actually it's quite significant. You imagine if the Earth starts slowing down, rotating by one second each day. You know, very quickly we'd actually find that the Earth stopped rotating. And this is kind of happening to the Comet 67P, it's starting to slow down. And the reason is really interesting. Again, this was the actual comet is made up of a lot of gas and dust on the inside of it. And what happens is when this heats up, it expands and it propels and explodes itself out of the side of the comet. And when this happens, it's happening like a mini thruster. So this is sort of pumping air outwards, and as it's doing, it's acting like a thruster or a mini rocket that's sort of making it move in a certain direction. And if these all happen to sort of overall point in one certain direction, which is what we think is happening, is actually slowing down the comet. And it's really, really interesting. Um, you might also remember that Philae, the little lander, is somewhere on the surface of 67P. And this doesn't have a lot of sort of uh, effect on Philae at the moment. But actually, ESA scientists have announced recently that they're going to start using Rosetta to try and search for Philae again. So Philae is lost somewhere on the surface, and we don't think it has enough light to be able to power itself using its solar panels. We think that hopefully as it gets close to the sun, maybe it'll get enough power. But Rosetta is also trying to find where Philae is on the surface. And this is kind of useful so we can communicate with Philae better and we can know what kind of situation it's in. So there you have it. That's your weekly science news. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and check me on Twitter at UKAstronaut. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all soon. There's something special about seeing a solar eclipse. Many of us will only get to see one during our lifetime because they're that rare an event. Solar filters on cameras and solar eclipse glasses means that millions of us can get together and enjoy this spectacular event together. But what is a solar eclipse? What causes it? And what science can we do with one? 